Thanks for joining us today. You will be blessed by the teaching on Why Are We Cursed? As you listen to this teaching, ask the Holy Spirit to bring enlightenment pertaining to areas in your life where you may be walking under a curse. God's plan for you and I is that we will experience blessings in every part of our life. So good to have you with us once again and I trust that you're enjoying this uh, teaching, this series, uh, for lack of a better word, more than what I am, as much as what I am. Uh, I'm really enjoying just being able to share this, this revelation that God gave me some years ago. Um, as I mentioned in our first lecture, that the covenant of Abraham was established and, and Jesus came to cut covenant with us. And our second lecture, we looked at the fact that uh, Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3, as Abraham would leave his land, Abraham would leave his land. He, God said to him, move from that which is familiar territory, move from that which is known, move from that which uh, doesn't require faith, move from that which I will take you into and uh, I will establish covenant with you and this covenant would be a generational covenant. And so we see how, uh, if you study scripture, you just have a look at how God established covenant with um, Isaac and, and all the families being you and I in the earth could be blessed. We looked at the principle of blessing and, and how God said to him, I will make of you a great nation. We looked at the, uh, just very briefly, the blessing on the nation of Israel. Uh, we looked at the fact that the Jewish man is blessed because of this covenant and, and that it's a generational blessing. And, and do you know that the word bless in the original Hebrew means to bow down to? It's an act of adoration. It's an act of serving. It's an act of, of doing good. And so as the church today, many times we think of just blessing God, but we don't realize in essence how much we are actually walking in the blessing because of the, the nation of Israel, because of what uh, God did for us uh, through His chosen, what God has done for us through Jesus, our Jewish Messiah, coming and, and establishing covenant with us. And so there's certain things about Genesis chapter 12 that I just want to uh, continue to look at today and, and look at the fact that uh, what does the word curse mean? Um, I, I remember as a young uh, girl, I was raised in a very anti-Semitic home. I, I was taught that uh, Jews are dirty people. I was taught that uh, we, we shouldn't build relationship with Jewish people. And so this spirit uh, remained and, and continued to influence my life. And then as a, a, a uh, I would say when I went uh, established, became established in ministry, um, obviously uh, in many uh, quarters of the, the Christian church today, sometimes ministers uh, can be financially poor. Um, many of our believers, our brethren today, don't have that um, benefit, that financial benefit. Many even uh, fail to pay tithes. Many even fail to, to give because many are living on the breadline. And I remember as a young girl uh, stepping out into ministry and I had nobody to support me. And one day God spoke to me from Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3 and He said to me, in my very uh, innocent and my very naive state, He said, if you will begin to bless a Jewish person, I will bless you. And I began to take part of, of my savings, part of my um, monthly um, tithe, my, my monthly uh, stipend that I was given, uh, which wasn't very much. And at that time, I, I had nowhere to live. Um, my father suddenly came to me and he said to me, you know, you're a girl who's in ministry and you, I can see you have very little. And so he said to me, I want to, uh, as part of your, your blessing, as part of your inheritance, I want to buy you an apartment. And so he put me in this apartment, which was a place for me to live. I had no transport. I had no furniture. But I continued to pay very little. I, I blessed a Jewish person, um, a Jewish Messianic Jewish organization. Um, it was very, very little, but it, you know, it wasn't the amount that I was giving. 
It was from the heart that I was given. And God began to honor His Word in my life. Before long, I was blessed with furniture. Um, uh, somebody put carpets in, in the apartment. I was then blessed with a motor car. I had no transport at the time. I was then blessed with uh, 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 goods to be able to cook and, and appliances. I was blessed with the microwave. I was able to buy a fridge which cost very, very little. That particular fridge I had for 20 years before I married my husband. And I began to see that there was something here. God wanted to establish me. You see, what happens when we begin to walk in the blessing, God begins to establish us. He begins to establish the work of your hands. Whatever uh, uh, career path that you have chosen, um, to become great in that, that career path, you need to be established. You, you need to be able to be financially blessed. Your company needs to be blessed financially. You need to be able to grow. And you see, as you begin to understand this, this principle today, that blessing that is on the nation of Israel, that blessing that is on the Jewish person because of the covenant comes upon you. So it's more than just you as a Gentile believer today blessing the house of God where God has put you. God is saying to us as Gentile believers today that He wants to expand our territory. God is saying to us as Gentile believers today that He wants to grow us. God is saying to us as Gentile believers today that He wants to take us into a land flowing with milk and honey where there is no lack. And for many of us, we, are, we truly are in lack. I, I want to give you a personal testimony. In 2005, I was struck down with a life-threatening disease. Um, I was paralyzed from head to toe. I was, uh, in, went into a coma, um, uh, three comas actually, and, and I saw the Lord. And I, I, my doctors said to me that, it would take six months for me to learn to walk again, and it would take uh, six months in ICU. And being, a, a, I was still single at the time, being a, 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 a traveling preacher, uh, I, I wasn't able to afford a, a, a medical aid. It wasn't one of my priorities. I, I needed to establish the ministry. Uh, God blessed me by putting me on various television channels throughout the world. And, and He really began to elevate my name. But medically, it wasn't a priority for me. And God was beginning to elevate the ministry. And suddenly I was struck down with this disease. It, the, I had no medical aid and the doctors uh, said to my family, um, you know, it will, it will cost you in the region of 700 to over 1.2 million for these medical expenses. If you are to be put in a first world um, hospital, continue with first world treatment, etc. And so I, basically I, I had to choose between that or choose between dying. And I knew that God still had a plan for my life. I, I knew that He still wanted to use me. He would promised me certain things, that He was going to use me around the earth. And I'd continue to observe this principle of blessing the Jewish believer, a Messianic uh, believer. And my family got together and, and obviously they panicked. They said, where, where will the money come from? We will have to sell a house. We will have to sell all the, the, the material goods that God has blessed her with. And so um, I, I lay in that hospital bed. I couldn't fight. Uh, it was, there was tremendous darkness around me. But the day came when a Messianic Jewish friend of mine, uh, her husband being an enlightened Jew, uh, he said to her, you know, we need to do something for Janet. We, we need, she's a woman who has traveled the nations and she has a gift to the body of Christ. And so uh, he met with um, my family and he said to uh, them, I want to offer that we will pay three quarters of, of her medical bills. 
Well, I want to tell you today that I walked out of that hospital um, within nine weeks. I was walking again and my, my doctor said to me, and obviously I, I get a bit emotional, but my doctors had said, you will never walk again for many years. Within nine weeks of being admitted to um, ICU and going off to rehab, I walked out of that hospital. Um, I had no crutches. I was breathing normally. I was obviously on life support in I ICU. I was able to drive my car with um, being um, uh, released and uh, discharged from hospital. I was able to drive my car within a week. Uh, I had no medical bills. My, I, I had my house, um, I had all my, my uh, goods which the Lord had blessed me with and I was totally free. I wasn't free to continue with ministry because my body was obviously a bit weak but I was able to walk around the, 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 our neighborhood and I was able to testify to many of my Gentile um, believers, my Gentile friends and I know today that that same blessing, the blessing of health, I've never ever suffered uh, 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 any health problems since then. I've continued to bless um, and continue, God has continued to bless me. He's continued to build my name. He, uh, I was able to um, go into and pursue some business interests. And even in those business interests, after um, being released from hospital, God made my name great. He made me financially great. And, and today, I'm a living testimony, not of just what I'm preaching, but I'm a living testimony. I, I, I walk it every day. And this is, I believe, as a prophet of God today, I want to say to the Gentile church that this is a, a secret for the end time church. This is a secret for those who will always remain poor. If you will get, uh, allow God to, to birth this truth in your heart, this is a secret to your name becoming great. This is a secret to God doing great things through you. This is a secret to a life of abundance. This is a secret to the place where others will serve you. Because if you think of the fact that in our Jewish Messiah today, our name can become great. Great names are, are there because people serve them. Great names are there because uh, they, they, they have precedence over others. Great names in society have, a, have achieved a certain level of dominion and they haven't achieved it alone. They've achieved it because others have served them. And so God wants to make your name great today in every sector, sphere of your life, in every sector of society that, that you're involved in.